So today we're talking about combos in Commander in your favourite EDH format. Now this video was originally going to be a lot longer, but due to the amount of technical information I've had to put in here to explain all these combos, I've cut this down, so expect a part two coming pretty soon. Right, anyway, let's get on with the video. So we're starting off with Isochron Scepter and Dramatic Reversal. Isochron Scepter is a two mana artifact with imprint. When Isochron Scepter comes into play, you may remove an instant card with converted mana cost two or less in your hand from the game. The remove card is imprinted on this artifact. And then for a mere two mana and tap, you copy the imprinted instant card and play the copy without paying its cost. Next up, Dramatic Reversal. One of the blue instant meets the requirements of imprint. Untap all non-land permanents you control. You see where this is going? Cast Ice Concept onto the battlefield for two mana. It has imprint. We imprint Dramatic Reversal underneath it or onto this card. It's normally demonstrated like this. Um, from there on, we just need to take, pay two mana to tap this and it will cast a copy of Dramatic Reversal, untapping all non land permanents we control. Yeah, so we end up exactly where we were. So we need to make sure we're at least mana neutral to repeatedly do this effect. How do we do that? Something simple like a Soul Ring. Yeah, so we tap Soul Ring for two mana, activate the Ice Grand Scepter, untap all non land permanents we control, and we're back to where we were. Storm count now one. Yeah. We can then repeat this process however many times you would like to generate enough mana or enough storm count um, to get to where we want to be. We could then cast a card such as Brain Freeze, provided we still have two mana available. This is Brain Freeze, one in a blue. Target player puts the top three cards of his or her library into his or her graveyard and it has storm. When you play this spell, copy it for each spell played before it this turn. You may choose new targets for the copies. Awesome. So we could do this loop, say, 300,000 times, cast Brain Freeze, and target each of our opponents with 100,000 triggers of Brain Freeze, milling them three cards for every trigger. Amazing stuff. We can then move to their turn. They'll have no cards in their library unless they have an instant way of getting their graveyard back into their library. Yeah, then we can win the game because they won't have a card when they draw the game. Another way we could win is have something like Sphinx's Bone Wand in play. This would need to be in play before we start activating this at mana neutral, yeah? So, Sphinx's Bone Wand, whenever you cast an instant or sorcery spell, you may put a charge counter on Sphinx's Bone Wand, yeah? Sphinx's Bone Wand deals damage equal to the number of charge counters on it to target creature or player. So with this in play, and Isochron Scepter doing its loop, we're casting a copy of Dramatic Reversal for each time we do this, we put charge counter on, Deals one damage, two damage, three, four, five, and we can then ping people out of the game. Yeah, so that's two different ways we could win. You can also use our Conceptor to generate infinite mana. Yeah, we can do this by using artifacts that tap for more than two mana, such as Thran Dynamo or Guild of Lotus, for instance. Tap for three, tap Ice Conceptor for two, untap all non-nine permanents. You have now netted one colorless mana. Yeah, same with Guilted Lotus, except this is coloured mana. So we can do the same. It will net a coloured mana of our choice. Obviously, if you had them all on the battlefield, you could float all the mana, activate, untap, rinse and repeat, generating more mana each turn, each time. So therefore, you'd be making infinite mana. Other ways that you could then win from this is if you had something like a Thrasio in play, where it costs four mana to look at the top card, etc., and you can cycle through your deck at that point doing something like that. So infinite mana, we can storm, whichever way you want to win. Ice Conceptor is the crux for this. So when Ice Conceptor comes down on the battlefield on your opponent's side, yeah, when they tap to activate it for the very first time, you respond to the cast trigger of the copy of Dramatic Reversal, yeah, and you destroy this. Yeah, if they stop your interaction, then they stop your interaction, but at least you try to stop it before it went completely infinite. Because if you remove it at that point, it's then in their graveyard, the copy will resolve, and they have no more combo pieces left. Amazing stuff. That is Ice Crown Scepter, and how to stop Ice Crown Scepter. The other easy way to stop Ice Crown Scepter is when they cast it, so just count on the damn thing. So now we're looking at Phyrexian Vindicator and Guilty Conscience. Phyrexian Vindicator is a four mana creature Phyrexian Horror. It's a five five with flying. If damage would be dealt to Phyrexian Vindicator, prevent that damage, and when damage is prevented this way, Phyrexian Vindicator deals that much damage to any other target. Notice how that's other target, not creature. So yeah, can target anything. 
Guilty Conscience, it's a bit of an older card. It's one white mana for an enchant creature, so this is an aura. Whenever an uh, enchanted creature deals damage, Guilty Conscience deals that much damage to an enchanted creature. Yeah, let's see where this is going. We have Phyrexian Vindicator in play. We cast a Guilty Conscience. We attack. We deal damage. Yeah, doesn't matter whether it's to a creature or to a player. Because as soon as Phyrexian Vindicator deals damage, Guilty Conscience is going to deal that much damage to the enchanted creature. But Phyrexian Vindicator says it can't receive damage, and should it receive damage, it's going to deal that much damage to any other target. Yeah? So what we'll do is we'll attack in the air. It hits for 5. Guilty Conscience triggers, deals 5 to Vindicator. Vindicator goes, okay, well I'll deal 5 to your face. Guilty Conscience triggers and goes, well you've just dealt damage, so you can take 5. Phyrexian Vindicator says, well, I can't take damage, but I'll deal five to their face again. Yeah? And you get a loop. Yeah? So just remember, well, even when you deliver the knockout blow, it kills somebody, then get the next trigger, then target the next thing. Yeah? Rinse, repeat. Yeah? Doesn't do anything on its own once it's on the battlefield, but as soon as damage is hit onto the Phyrexian Vindicator, or Phyrexian Vindicator deals damage in itself, it goes off. For instance... This is in play, and you can't attack, but you ping it for one damage. For example, Vindicator can't take the one damage, so then deal one damage to something else, then triggers the Guilty Conscience and starts the loop. So two different ways of starting it, either through combat damage yourself, or getting this to ping. Here we have another white card combo. It's Heliod Sun Crowned and Walking Ballista. So, Heliod Sun Crowned, two and a white legendary enchantment creature. It's a god. It's a 5-5 that's indestructible. As long as your devotion to white is less than 5, Heliod isn't a creature, so it's just an enchantment. Yeah, he also has, whenever you gain life, put a plus 1 plus 1 counter on target creature or enchantment you control. And then for 1 and a white, another target creature gains lifelink until end of turn, enable him to do his ability. Walking Ballista is XX00 Artifact Creature Construct. Walking Ballista enters the battlefield with X plus 1 plus 1 counters on it. A 4 mana, put a plus 1 plus 1 counter on Walking Ballista, and then you can remove a counter from Walking Ballista, and it will deal 1 damage to any target. Yeah? So with the Walking Ballista mana cost, if you'd paid 1 and 1, it would come in with 1 counter on it. Yeah? And as soon as you remove that 1 counter, it would die because it would have 0 toughness. So you'd need to pay 2-2, two, two, yeah, to get Walking Ballista to come into play with 2 counters on it, so it would cost you 4 mana in total. Yeah, and then that way if you removed a counter, it would still have one counter left. Awesome stuff. So, four mana into Walking Blister, three mana into Heliod Sun Crown, then a further two mana to activate its ability, giving Walking Ballista lifelink. We can then choose to start doing Walking Blister's ability. Remove a counter from Walking Blister, and it's going to deal one damage to any target. It now has lifelink, it's going to gain life. Heliod will trigger, put a plus one plus one counter on target creature you control, because I've gained life. Amazing, I'll put that plus one plus one counter back onto Walking Blister. You see where this is going? Remove a counter, ping deal one, Walking Blister triggers, here's some life, have another counter. Ping, life, counter, ping, life, counter. We can then essentially machine gun our opponents down. Ping, 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 ping. Yep, easy peasy. Costs nine mana to do this in total. Normally you can probably get away with playing Heliod Sudden Crown up the battlefield. If you do, your opponents may go, do you play Walking Blister in that deck? And then it's up to your choice whether you be honest at that point. I would advise being honest and saying, yes, I do, but I don't have it in hand, or I don't have any ways of tutoring for it, so, you know, it is in the deck somewhere. Yeah, amazing stuff. Yeah, and that's it. That's the combo. Yeah, if you get this on the battlefield first, and then play this afterwards, playing this on its own in a, in a white deck... Uh, might start to trigger alarm bells, so you probably get around it better by playing Heliod first and then following up with Walking Blister on the following turn, should you need to split this combo over two turns. But yeah, Heliod, Walking Blister, nice, simple, easy, ping, gain life, gain counters, ping, gain life, gain counters, easy peasy. This time, Opalescence and Enchanted Evening. Shout out to Luke for putting me onto this combo. Enchanted Evening is three white and a blue, um, that's like hybrid Azorius, so white, blue, white, blue. Enchantment. All opponents are enchantments in addition to their other types. So it turns everything into an enchantment. All opponents into an enchantment, I should say. An opalescence. Two white white. Each other global enchantment is a creature with power and toughness equal to its converted mana cost. It's still an enchantment. Enchanted evening in play. 
Everything is now an enchantment. Yeah, all permanents, including your lands. Yeah, Opalescence comes into play and says each enchantment is a creature with power and toughness, equal to its converted mana cost. Unfortunately, lands don't have a power and toughness, so this would destroy all lands. Yeah, or any zero mana artifacts, things like that, because they would all become enchantments, then the enchantments would also become creatures. So if it's a zero mana artifact, a land, anything that has no CMC, they would all be destroyed. Remember, this is your stuff as well as all your opponent's stuff. How do you get around this for yourself? You play a card such as Ben Elish Marshall or any other lord that says other creatures you control get plus one plus one or all creatures you control get plus one plus one, something like that. That way, when this is in play and Opalescence comes down, your lands have plus one plus one because they are creatures, so they don't die, yet all your opponent's stuff does. Just bear in mind, if somebody deletes this and this is still in play, you will then lose all your lands yourself. So it can be quite hard. So maybe always keep some answers up or removal up for your own uh, enchantment creature, which is Opalescence. So if somebody targets this, you can target your Opalescence. That will then die, but your lands won't get destroyed because they'll just be enchantments and not creatures anymore. Yeah, amazing stuff. Enchanted Evening, Opalescence, quite a harsh combo. Yeah, seen in a lot of uh, enchantment decks. Uh, but yeah, if you see this come down, be prepared. If you see this come down, especially with things like Paralax Wave as well, it's combos with quite a few bits. So, Opalescence, nasty card, but also great. This is Displace the Kitten and Teferi Time Raveler. So, Displace the Kitten is three and a blue creature, cat, beast. It's a 2 2 and it has avoidance. Whenever you cast a non-creature spell, exile up to one target non man permanent you control, then return it to the battlefield under its owner's control. We also have Teferi Time Raveler, everybody's favourite card, definitely not broken. One white and a blue legendary planeswalker Teferi, comes in with four loyalty. Each opponent can cast spells only any time they could cast a sorcery, so it stops them from casting instant spells. Yep, yeah, plus one. Until your next turn, you may cast sorcery spells as though they had flash. Minus three, return up to one target artifact, creature or enchantment to its owner's hand and draw a card. So to get this combo started, we're going to need something to trigger it. So we're going to need something like a Soul Ring or a Mox Amber, either something that taps for more mana than it costs to play. So, so you start with the Soul Ring. In play, Teferi in play, Displace the Kitten in play. We'll tap our Soul Ring, generate two mana. We will minus three Teferi and bounce the artifact back to our hand and draw a card. Amazing stuff, we have two colours mana floating. We can then cast our Sol Ring for one of that, leaving one mana in our mana pool. Displace the Kitten will trigger, bouncing Teferi, yeah, because it bounces a non-land permanent, resetting the loyalty, allowing us to then minus three, because this is a new instance of Teferi, to bounce the Sol Ring again, but obviously we'll tap this for two mana before we activate the minus three, yeah, then bounce it, come back to our hands. We're going to draw a card and generate infinite colourless mana. Awesome stuff. If we did the same type of thing with a Mox Amber, obviously we can make mana of any colour equal to legendary permanents we control, in this case the Planeswalker. So we tap this for blue or white. Done. Minus three. Bounce it. Cast it for zero. We've still got the blue or the white, whatever we generated in our mana pool. Rinse and repeat. We're going to draw cards and we're going to gain infinite mana. So there we have it, a whole bunch of combos for you to play in your commander decks or to just be aware of in case your opponents play them against you. Um, personally, I'm a bit of a fan of having a bit of a sneaky combo in your deck just to make sure you can close the game out other than uh, combat damage. So um, yeah, if you can take a moment to just like, comment and subscribe, that would be greatly appreciated. And uh, I'll see you all in the next one, which should hopefully be part two, which will probably come after Bloomborough stuff because that's about to kick off. Anyway, thanks for watching and bye for now.